to our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia. My name's Larry. Hey, a friend of a, <coughs> excuse me, a friend of a friend had this uh, Duncan Fife style Chippendale 1940s serpentine front uh, double dresser in storage for many years. And uh, they were finally able to build a new house and they went to get out of storage and put it in their house. And the finish, pretty much from here over, had just disintegrated. It basically is just, you can see this, just crystallized, uh, probably from moisture when it was in storage. It had been covered. And they asked me if I could help. Well, sure I can. So the first step is going to be to get this old finish off, and then we're going to have to seal it up. This, ta or this uh, dresser originally came with a, with a smooth finish. In other words, any uh, grain pits in the mahogany were filled with a grain filler, so we'll probably have to do that. And then, the, you know, the challenge as always is to color match it. We'll top coat it. We'll clean up the case for them, and we'll uh, move it on out of here. I tried to use a, a razor blade to scrape the finish off, and it works just great where the finish is compromised, but where it's not, not so well. So we'll probably have to use a commercial stripper on this half. This half here will probably, most of it will, excuse me, just scrape, scrape off. So let me get this wrapped up. We'll get this stripped off and we'll get to work. Okay, we got it all wrapped up in plastic to protect that part of the piece that I'm not going to be working on. And we're going to apply methylene chloride stripper like we always do and we'll start stripping and get this top stripped off. So here we go. And the garage door is open, that door is open, the door behind you is open. I have plenty of ventilation in here, so I'm not wearing breathing protection for that reason. You do what you think you need to do to keep yourself safe. I've just got a little bit of 4 aught steel wool which I dip into the stripper and then I gently use it to uh, rub off whatever stubborn finish we have left. I know some people don't like to do this, they think it takes up too much color, but one of the things I noticed when I started to strip this is that the area where the finish had failed, the color has lightened and we're going to have a color match challenge when we restore this piece, restore the finish on this piece. So I'm not too worried about, about that. And hopefully you can see and hopefully you can see how brown this is and how red this is. And this is where the finish was broken. So this is going to be a bit of a challenge. And she's all stripped off. Let's take a look at what we've got to deal with. We've got a pretty good whack right there on the top. We'll fill that. That's the biggest issue we have right there. That lightning and this opening of the grain which is quite open right now, is from long-term exposure to moisture, and that's what killed the finish. There was, there was dampness on here. Uh, they had said they had covered it with a, a blanket. I guess it must have trapped the moisture and just held it against the wood. Uh, this is, this is going to be a, a bit of a challenge for us. I, I, mean, I hope you can see just, just what we're dealing with. It's, about, it's almost half the dresser. And then as far as the cigarette burns go, uh, the first one was barely to the wood and then the second one is a little bit darker but I don't feel any indentations there so these should sand off and they should be fine and then there's a little veneer chip here and some other some other minor repairs but I guess the next step here is to uh, is to hit this with some lacquer thinner then neutralize the thinner with water then we'll let it dry for a little while and I'll come back and we'll start to sand and then I think we're gonna have the grain fill so I'll bring you back and she's set up outside. I got 120 grit on my random orbit sander. Let's see how this sands out. Keep in mind, this is a veneer top. We can't get too aggressive.
And I got you outside on this beautiful, bright, sunny Georgia day. And we've got it sanded off. And you can see, I hope, here is our dark area here. It's not nearly as bad as it was before, but it's definitely there. So if this darkness was caused by water, let's try some oxalic acid on it and see if we can lighten this up and get this a little bit closer than it is now. And as you've seen me do before, this is oxalic acid. It comes in a powder. It's uh, also sold as wood bleach. I mix it with warm, warm water until it won't go into solution anymore. And we put it on the entire top. And the bare mahogany top has been soaked in oxalic acid. And we're just going to let this sit out here and dry. And right here, if you follow my finger, that's the line that we hope goes away and in this darker area here. We'll see. As I've said in other videos, oxalic is one of those things that sometimes it works and sometimes not so well. But very often it's a miracle worker for us. So let's give it a chance to work. I'll bring you back when it dries. Okay, it's that time to dry. This is the area we were worried about. Let's see how it looks like when we get some uh, water on here and rinse off this oxalic. And as we've discussed before, you want to make sure you get this stuff rinsed off real well. Just flood it with clear water. You don't want to be breathing it while you sand. You certainly don't want it reacting with your finish. Yeah, that is a whole lot better. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. Outstanding. We've got a little bit of darkness through here, but it's not bad. Not bad at all. Much, much better. What do you think? Better? I think it is. And now I'm just wondering if I should put a second coat on here because we have just a little bit here and it's all within the tones of the mahogany. Let's put a second coat on it and then I think we're going to be in real good shape. I'll bring you back when that second coat is done. And the second coat of oxalic has been put on, let dry, and then rinsed off. And here's what we have. Very happy with how much it's lightened. Here's the area. The tones match. It's a little bit darker. We'll be able to match this in with color matching techniques with no problem. Remember before we started, this was almost green. And it really, really jumped out. And now... It looks very much better. We've got two coats of oxalic on this. That's as much as I dare do. I think we've gotten all we're going to get from the oxalic. Now this piece, as you know, has been stripped. It's been wiped off with lacquer thinner. It's been wiped off with water. And it's had two coats, two applications of oxalic acid and water. We need to let this dry thoroughly before we start to seal it or do any additional sanding. So we're going to let this sit for the rest of the night. We'll get back on it tomorrow afternoon. So, so far I'm very happy with the results. Today's work gets a thumbs up and we will see you tomorrow when we sand, seal, and start to do some of the color work on this top. Hey, we're back. It's been about 20 hours that this has had to dry and uh, we're ready to move forward. The next step is to sand it with 220 lightly. Remember, it's been near top. We've already sanded it once. So we're going to sand it lightly to knock down any of the grain that raised because of the water that was in the oxalic solution. And then we'll get it sealed up. I was reviewing the footage from yesterday and I realized how badly the shadows outside uh, kept you from seeing a lot of the detail here. So in just a second I'll bring in and show you what we're dealing with with the area that we've got lightened with the oxalic. And here we go. Here's our area right here. It has just a little bit less red in it than the surrounding area, but most of the stain, remember this was almost half of this entire dresser top was stained because the finish had been gone. So the oxalic got us an awful lot. So I'm going to hand sand this with 220 and then we're going to seal it up.
And while I'm waiting for the sealer coat to dry, I'm going to start to color the edges. This is a uh, Cordovan mahogany pigmented color. And there's a lot of different ways of doing this, but the way I'm going to do it today is I'm just going to put this on with my finger, just like so, staying on the edges. Now remember, the edge was an, a dark, opaque color originally, and we're going to get back towards that. Certainly it would have been acceptable to leave it the way it was, but this is more like it was, so that's how we're going to do it. And then I'll just lock that color in with some lacquer. So let me get going on this edge, and we'll get that taken care of. And then we'll sand the top one more time, and we'll make a decision as to whether or not we want to grain fill it or just keep going. The second coat of sealer is on and it's pretty well dry but I'm trying to get you guys in the light you can see all this open grain. These are these are the pores of the mahogany wood and there are an awful lot of them that are open. This, this whole row here is open. This whole section that was the worst of our stain and the stain is pretty well gone, but you can see the grain is is very open. You can see it here. So I'm going to have to grain fill this. This has been sealed, so the only option I have is oil-based grain filler, which goes on and takes 24 hours to dry, unfortunately. And then if you miss a spot, it's another 24 hours for a second application. Uh, Water-based grain filler will go on before you seal. It goes right on the raw wood dries in an hour or two, you sand it down and you move on. I wanted to seal this piece first to see how it was going to come out before I made a decision to grain fill it. And as I expected, it's, it needs to be grain filled. You can see right there exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to give the uh, sealer about an hour to get nice and hard. And then we will come in and grain fill it using a mahogany grain filler oil based. Okay, I'm not sure that I've ever demonstrated uh, solvent-based, oil-based uh, pore filler, paste wood filler, whatever you want to call it, on the channel before. Uh, you can use it on raw wood. If you do use it on raw wood, you're going to get color with it. It's going to stain your wood at the same time, which may not be a bad thing. But you can also use it over a seal coat, so pretty much it won't stain the wood. It's just going to leave its color within the open grain. This is basically a medium kind of like clay or maybe a fine grind silica with a, uh, a binding agent maybe like tongue oil or something like that and it's carried in either naphtha or mineral spirits. So you put it on uh, with a consistency of well, I don't know thick cream or something like that and you work it into the grain and if if this is your 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 pour that needs to be filled, you're stuffing it down in there until it's level with the, with the top and then you want to try to get the uh, remainder off. So in general you're going to kind of grind it in, work it in, let it haze over, start to flash off and then try to get it, try to pull it off. You want to pull it off either in a circular motion or against the grain and then as it continues to dry use a piece of burlap and you buff it. Uh, sometimes it takes multiple coats to get what you want. Let's hope that's not the case here. This does take at least eight hours, usually overnight uh, dry time. That's why I don't use oil-based uh, grain fillers very often. This is what I'm using. This is um, Mohawk's grain filler. This is in mahogany. And I've got this thinned down with some naphtha to about that consistency. So let me get you positioned. You can see what I'm doing. And I've got this set up on a uh, a piece of scrap wood right now, so I don't get anything on the on the uh, dresser until I'm ready. Now I'm going to put this on just with a uh, a chip brush, and I'm working it into the grain. don't want to do too much of an area where when it starts to haze up you can't get it you can't get it off because once it sets up it sets up and uh, you probably have to sand it all down. 
and here it's kind of up close if you can see underneath here that we force that grain filler right into the grain of the wood and you can see it's starting to dry here but this is what I'm going to wipe this off and then I'll get back and I'll refill it but that's what we're we're looking to accomplish if you can see the grain it now has that mahogany filler in it okay let me get cracking and I'll bring you back when it's uh, ready to get wiped off and we've got the entire uh, piece now covered in the in the grain filler and you can see here it's all starting to uh, to dry so what I've got is a uh, a credit card and I'm just going to start to draw off the excess grain filler now you're su supposed to be able to uh, put this stuff right back in the can and use it but today I'm going to just wipe it off on a rag. And you can imagine how this would stain raw wood. So you've got to keep that whole issue of color in the back of your mind if you're going to make a choice about how you're going to grain fill. When you're involved refinishing open grain wood, such as mahogany, oak, ash, walnut, those are the common furniture ones, if you want a smooth finish, not one with open grain, you have to grain fill. Now whether you use a solvent based over a seal coat or a water based on the bare wood like I've showed you uh, in other videos uh, is up to you. And as I'm doing this you can see I've got the card I'm flattening the card not just scraping it off and it's just driving the grain filler down into the grain more clearly. If I held it up here I'd be pulling it off but what I'm doing is flattening it and really grinding I'm going to bring it towards the front of the project and you can see we're starting to haze up here so what I've got is just some burlap and using circular motions starting to work the excess grain filler off the surface and at the same time pushing the grain filler into the grain and it's okay leave this the way it is you see this build up here that's going to help you drive it into the into the wood okay I'm going to get the rest of this wiped off and I'll bring you right back well after just way too much work this is what we've got for the top it looks a whole lot better uh, it's not perfect yet but again tomorrow after this hardens up we will sand it down as far as we feel we need to and um, start building the finish from there. Not a bad day's work. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. It's day three of this uh, little project to refinish the top of this mahogany triple dresser. So far we've stripped it. We've used oxalic acid to remove a huge water stain. And then we uh, applied two coats of sealer and grain filler. It's now time to sand off our first layer of grain filler and see if we have to put on a second coat. I anticipate this is going to be a very messy job. This stuff is going to powder up. I'm going to have blue or purple dust all over everything. So I'm going to move it towards the garage door. Of course, it's raining out, so I can't take it outside. And I'm going to use a vacuum cleaner as I sand. And I'll have a dust mask on and I'm wearing just about my worst clothes I could find. And we'll get this sanded off. Again, we've sanded this top already. It's veneer. We have to be very careful. I'm going to hand sand with 220 on a block and see how that works off. I expect that the uh, sandpaper is probably going to choke up pretty quickly. But we'll see what happens. I'm also going to use a vacuum cleaner uh, as I sand and try to keep the dust down. So let me get this set up. I'll set up the camera and we'll start to, uh, we'll start to sand this off. 
Before I do that, I'm going to bring in and show you what this looks like before we take it off. So here's what we're dealing with at this point in time. The grain filler is in as well as it's going to get in, and we have this uh, deep mahogany color, which is actually uh, the grain filler that's dried on the surface of the wood. So the idea is to sand off what's on the surface of the wood and leave what's inside the pores. So let's get to work. I think you can see where the, the grain filler has gone into all the open grain in the mahogany. It's these dark spots, of course, and we're sanding off this and turning it into that. So that's what I got to do. I'm going to turn you off and I'll bring you back when it's all done. And after about 20 minutes of sanding, and, and it really wasn't hard, the stuff powdered right up and came off. It's just that you had to con constantly clean your sandpaper. I use the vacuum cleaner to do that. Uh, we've got this sanded down. I'm pretty confident that I've got all of the grain filler that was on the surface off. And you can see we have all of the open grain, if you remember how, how that looked, has been filled. So we're ready to uh, move forward. I'm going to get this wiped down so there's not a speck of dust on it. And then I'm going to shoot a mist coat of sealer on it. When that dries, we'll shoot a, a regular coat of sealer on it, and then we'll start to rub those down, and we'll uh, take a look and see what we need to do for color, and then we'll get it top coated. But uh, real happy with that. Lessons learned. I wouldn't worry quite so much about getting it all off, more so about getting it into the grain, and whatever lays on the surface when it dries after uh, 12 hours or overnight, it's going to sand right off for you. Just make sure you're ready to deal with the dust. Okay, let's move forward. We have a mist coat of sealer on the top. Uh, I understand that if you, uh, if you put a regular wet coat or a flood coat on it, you run the risk of wrinkling the, uh, the grain filler. I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate, but why risk it? But uh, we're looking really, really good. That top looks outstanding. If you remember how open that grain was, where that damage was, and now look at it now. This is really, really, really looking good. I'm very, very happy. Very happy we used the grain filler. I'm very happy the way it worked. And uh, let's move forward. I just sprayed the second coat of sealer on, and I hope you can see just how flat that surface is with not a single open grain pour. And you remember now, what you're looking at right now is the part that was stained and had blown all open from the water, and it's completely closed up. The seal coat is flat. It looks really, really good. Okay. We've got the mist coat of sealer on, and we've got two additional coats of sealer down. Sand it out and rub down with four odd steel wool. So now the next step is probably what's going to be the most difficult, and that's to color match this. You can't see the uh, case color. I'll show it to you in a minute, but it's a deep brown mahogany with what looks to be quite a little bit of black in it. And we're going to start by shooting some mahogany dye stain. On the, uh, on the top and we'll start to slowly bring the color uh, to, match the, uh, to match the case and if we have to adjust it with a little black toner or a little black glaze we will. So let me show you what we're shooting for then I'm going to mix up some color we're going to spray it on. And that's what we're looking for it's this this color here which to me looks like a brown mahogany but you can see it looks like there's a little bit of black in it. So let's mix up some uh, brown mahogany dye stain, uh, some lacquer thinner, and some lacquer. We'll make our own toner and we'll shoot it on and we'll try to start to bring the color of this natural mahogany, kind of it's a yellow, orange, brown, down to this brown mahogany, which is a much deeper, uh, much deeper color. And here's the color I've mixed up. We're going to start with it uh, a little bit lighter, obviously, we don't want to overshoot it. So I'll start to spray some on and we'll see how we do.
and you can see how much closer we are now with that color that we've applied. We may be just a tad light, but that's fine. I'm going to shoot a coat of lacquer on it, and then we can make any final adjustments that we may have to, uh, perhaps with a glaze or whatever. We still have the ability to use a little black if we need. I don't want to go any darker on the top than I have. I think we're very, very close right now. So I'm going to spray a coat of lacquer on it. That'll be next. Okay, the lacquer coat's still wet, so it's going to be shinier, but... Color-wise, I think we're very close. Very close. I'm going to let this uh, lacquer coat dry, and we'll uh, reevaluate it. It may need just maybe just a light, light bit of black glaze on it, but I think once it dries and once we get the wrapping off, we're going to see that it's close enough. But we'll figure it out. I'll bring you back. And the second coat of lacquer is on, and I'm trying to get some natural light on the piece. For color matching purposes. I think we I think the black glaze is going to do exactly what we need it to do. I mean right now it's absolutely fine to go out the way it is. It it looks wonderful. The the top is multi-tonal. The the lightest parts of the top pick up the lightest parts of this. But I think it needs just just a touch of black. And I've got at least one more coat of lacquer I want to shoot on this. So I think I'm going to glaze this and then, uh, then shoot another coat of lacquer over top of it. I'll bring you back when it's time to glaze it. Good morning. It's an absolutely beautiful spring morning here in North Georgia. You can hear the birds chirping. The sky is clear. Let's go in the shop and wrap this project up. So as we talked about uh, yesterday, we're going to put a light glaze coat of black on this. Try to tie the top into the uh, rest of the case just a little bit better. Right now, I think it looks really, really good, but I think a little black is going to make it look even better. So what I've done is mix some black glaze with some nappa to thin it down, and we'll put that on and we'll see how it looks. And because of the amount of, of uh, nap that I've got in here to thin this down, this is going on a little wetter than normal. But we just pat off the excess and start to dry brush this out with the grain. And I'm dry brushing this out into a nice, thin, even coat. No puddles, no voids, and I'm trying to keep my brush strokes right with the grain. And I think that's going to do exactly what we want it to do. All right, let me bring you back. Okay, the glaze coat is on, and again, the light is terrible here. But I think you can see how we darkened that top color, and it's a much closer match now to what we have on the body. So this was the right thing to do. And we just shot the final lacquer coat on it. It's looking great. I'm going to uh, clean the case up for these folks as a courtesy. It could use a little cleaning. So I just mix up some TSP, some Dawn dishwashing detergent. TSP is trisodium phosphate. And I'll uh, scrub the case down, wipe it dry, and then when it dries, we'll put some wax on it and we'll be done. Okay, and you can see that with some TSP and Dawn dishwashing detergent, we got this clean. This, this, is, this is a something on the lens, I'm sorry. Uh, we got this clean and then uh, I used some crud cutter and some steel wool to get those paint grips off and then we used some Old English on it and as soon as the Old, Eng Old English has been wiped off, as soon as that dries I'll put a light coat of wax on it and she'll be done. Thank you.
she looks beautiful. I'm really, really happy the way this came out. And to be honest with you, I'm pretty proud of this. Uh, I wasn't even going to film this project for you. I thought it was going to be just kind of boring, just strip and color and top coat. And I'm glad I did because we had a couple of unexpected problems. We had that huge water stain and the associated open grain with it along with the open grain and the mahogany that we had to uh, address and we did and I think it came out beautiful. Uh, I was able to color match the top to the case I think very accurately and then I was able to touch the case up for these folks just by cleaning it up and, and, and polishing it. So a treasured piece that had been put in storage and was badly badly damaged is back the way it was when they put it back in there and and, and honestly I've done a, a ton of this Duncan Fife style stuff this piece other than the finish damage which wasn't their fault is almost like brand new I mean these people took super good care of their stuff and I'm sure that this is going to be treasured in their house for years to come and I'm just tickled pink I had a chance to do this so anyways, from our shop just outside Kennesaw here in North Georgia, best regards, thanks for watching, take good care, we'll see you next video, and remember, it's just wood, color, some shiny stuff, sometimes some stain, sometimes some open grain, but hey, if I can do this, it can't be that hard. Take good care, appreciate you watching, see you next video, thanks and bye.